Welcome to the 2023 Louisville Metro Area Art Region Scholastic Art Awards Ceremony. I'm Melissa Gano, the Jefferson County Public Schools K-12 Arts Instructional Leave and the Affiliate Coordinator for the Scholastic Art Awards for our region. We are here to celebrate the creativity, talent, and hard work of our young artists, as well as the educators, families, and friends who encourage, guide, and support them. The artwork produced for this program is truly indicative that art will always be a reflection of our civilization. In these works, you will see all the human emotion, fear, hope, sadness, joy, anger, love, and the ideas and dreams that push us to question ourselves and creatively forge our future. The visual arts are unique in that we are communicating with images versus the written or spoken word. In a time when visual arts education, the classes and programs are being relegated to just electives or completely being removed, I need your support in advocating for visual arts education and its importance. Decades of research show that visual arts education is closely linked to almost everything that we say as a nation we want for our children and demand from our schools. Academic achievement, social and emotional development, civic engagement, and equitable opportunity. The artwork you will see here in our regional exhibitions and in our online exhibitions is evidence of the value and importance of visual arts on our students' lives. A new idea feels like you're about to have a sneeze. It feels like a hummingbird a bit, like moving really fast. And you like need to, I don't want to say grab it, but, but you need to pay attention to it. Tolstoy said that art is the transmission of emotion from one person to the other, and that works for me. When I'm really in the zone, it's, it's an awesome feeling. I would just wake up from a dream when the painting was done. Like, it would be done and it would feel like magic. I couldn't even tell you how I did it. Creativity is freedom, like utter freedom and release. Creativity is cathartic. Anything in which the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, we want to find out what is that difference. And that's the creative pursuit. Usually when I feel like a poem is ready to either like go off into the world or I can put it away for a while, it's definitely when I feel like it's very honest and it's saying that thing that I wanted it to say at the beginning. Three-dimensional chess is a pretty complicated thing. Doing the kind of work we do is maybe four-dimensional. A good deal of creativity is about recognition. It's about speaking across human experience and we all expect our lives to be well-ordered, we want us to be happy, but in fact we are defined more by the subject suffering, by the loss, by the trauma that we experience. When I can't draw, I can just kind of like get lost a little in my mind and just start thinking about colors and shapes and placing things in different, in different areas on a page. You know, I could just zone out and think art. So that, that is one of the things that I, I really love to do. I started writing when I was very little. I pretty much knew that I wanted to be an an artist in general, and a painter in particular, probably by the time I was like 12. My mother had just passed away when I was 11, just a few months short of my 12th birthday. My father let me stay up late and watch old movies on TV, and I saw him cry at the James Mason film directed by Sir Carol Reed. I knew instantly I wanted to be a filmmaker. Storytelling was the first love language I knew. Everything that I have, all the knowledge, all the teachings, how to be as a person, especially as a Diné person, like came from stories. 
My junior year of high school, my English teacher pulled me aside after class and talked to me about a poem that I had submitted for an assignment. And she told me that it was, it was good. She was the same English teacher who a lot of the time was telling me to submit to Scholastic. That encouragement changed, I think, the trajectory of like what I thought I could do as an artist and as a writer. The Scholastic Award is hugely important, has made an extraordinary difference. You're made aware because you've been since a kid reading Scholastic Magazine in school and out of school, that there is now a place where they're asking something of you. Writing this short story and submitting it to Scholastic and having it be well received was a kind of verification. What a contest like Scholastic does is let you know that oh, okay, because these are the other people that are going to be on this track, right? And here you are, you're right there with them. It's a huge confidence builder. I think that that is one of the best things that Scholastics does because you're competing at first with people, you know, everybody in your county and then everybody in your state and then every, you know, and it, you just, you just kind of keep climbing that ladder. Storytelling gives everyone a voice. It's a nexus for change and it's a nexus for connection. It's just something that I feel like is fundamental to how we find ourselves and how we interact with each other. Oh, the advice I'd give is the one I inherited. Go, see, do, be. Make something. This year marks the 100th anniversary, the centennial of the National Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, the longest running, most prestigious art awards program for teens in the United States. The Scholastic Art and Writing Awards began in 1923 with the mission of providing guidance and support for the next generation of artists for whom creativity may be a life path. Each year, more than 77,000 students in grades 7 through 12 aged 13 years and older participate in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards program. The Alliance for Young Artists and Writers, the nonprofit which manages the awards program, divides the country up into regions, seeking affiliate partners to coordinate the writing and or the art portions of the program. Jefferson County Public Schools has been the affiliate for the Art Awards since 1991. The awards process begins across the country as young artists digitally submit more than 200,000 creative works of visual arts to their regional affiliates. Our submission deadline was January 4th. Regional judging began January 9th and was completed on January 13th. Judging is done by a panel of three local judges, experts in visual arts. They are professional artists in our community, college and university professors, and retired art educators. They have the unenviable task of selecting works for gold key, silver key, or honorable mention recognition from all that gets submitted. Students submit work in the following categories based on these art processes. Architecture and industrial design, ceramics and glass, comic art, design, digital art, drawing and illustration, editorial cartoon, expanded projects, fashion, film and animation, jewelry, mixed media, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture, as well as senior art portfolios. Artwork is judged on three criteria, originality, technical skill or proficiency, and emergence of a personal vision. So what do gold key, silver key, and honorable mention represent? Gold keys are the most exceptional works meeting all three criteria and are the only works that go on to compete at the national level. Silver keys are recognized for being of very high quality, worthy of recognition on the regional level. And honorable mentions are artworks demonstrating creative potential. Works submitted are permitted freedom of expression. There are no restrictions on subject matter to be considered for an award. The works are blindly adjudicated. Judges do not know the student or the school. At the regional level, works can earn an honorable mention, silver key, or gold key distinction. Gold key works and the five American Vision nominees selected from the gold keys advance to the national level. 
At the national level, students could win a gold medal, a silver with distinction, or a silver portfolio medal, as well as individual gold and silver medals. One of the five American Visions nominees from our region will be awarded the American Visions Medal. This year, 1,566 individual artworks and portfolios were submitted from Jefferson County and the 12 surrounding counties which make up the Louisville metro area art region. The counties in Kentucky include Jefferson, Bullitt, Hardin, Henry, Nelson, Oldham, Shelby, and Spencer. In southern Indiana, the counties are Clark, Crawford, Floyd, Harrison, and Washington. In the end, 460 works were awarded to 254 students at our regional level, 90 individual gold key works, and 10 gold key portfolios were sent to New York City for national judging. 112 individual silver key works, 12 silver key portfolios, 216 individual honorable mention artworks, and 21 honorable mention portfolios were selected. And then there were the five American Vision nominees, the best in show from the Gold Keys. Those works were included with those that go on to compete nationally. We had 75 educators from 36 public, parochial, and private schools, as well as homeschool students, plus six other educational programs participate. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our 2023 judges. These judges volunteer their time, giving of their expertise and knowledge. Once regional judging is completed, Goki artworks are adjudicated on the national level in New York City. Jury panels of professional artists review the works of art to select the approximately 1,200 national award recipients. Graduating seniors who have Gold Key art portfolios from their regional affiliate compete for national scholarships bestowed by the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers and a network of art institutes, colleges, and university. March 22nd is the National Awards Announcement Day. You will be able to go to the national website at artandwriting.org to find out who received a national award from our region. Students and educators can log in to their account to find out. National awards include the Individual and Portfolio Gold Medals, the American Visions Medal, the Silver Medal with Distinction Portfolio, and Special Sponsored Award Medalists. National celebrations and events, including the National Awards Ceremony at Carnegie Hall and exhibitions, will also be announced on March 22nd. There are two exhibitions that tour besides the National Award Ceremony exhibition that occurs during the celebration June 6th through the 9th. You can find out more again on March 22nd at www.artandwriting.org. There are Many opportunities for our award winners. On the national level, $10,000 scholarships are given by the Alliance to eight graduating seniors, seniors who earn portfolio gold medals in art. A select number of portfolio silver medalists will earn $1,000 silver medals with distinction awards. An additional 400 seniors who earn portfolio silver medals or portfolio gold medals will leverage partial to full ride scholarships from a network of more than 60 art universities, colleges, and institutes. More than a quarter million dollars is given annually through the Scholastic Awards Program and awards and scholarships to top winners and their educators. In addition, more than $8 million in scholarships is set aside each year by Alliance Partners for recipients of the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. In the last five years alone, students have submitted nearly 1,500,000 original works of art and writing. And during that period, more than 50 top 
art institutes and colleges have partnered with awards to make $40 million in scholarships and financial aid available to regional and national scholastic award winners. The art awards for the Louisville Metro Area Art Region would not be possible without the support and funding from Jefferson County Public Schools. This includes our superintendent and our Board of Education members. I'd also like to recognize Fund for the Arts, which covers the submission fees for non-JCPS park participating students. KMAC Museum for hosting our Go Key and American Vision nominees exhibition. To the Department of Fine Arts, Height Institute of Art and Design at the University of Louisville for hosting our Silver Key and Honorable Mention exhibition and to all of our special award sponsors. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to recognize all of our participating educators. I want to thank each of you for all of your hard work and dedication to nurture, nurture our young artists and to get everything together and work submitted by the deadline. Each participating educator with student awardees will receive a special Scholastic Art Awards Educator pin. Thank you again. Now let's take a minute to recognize last year's 2022 National Medalists. We do this at this time because National Medalists are not announced in time to include in the current year's awards ceremony. So 2022 National Medalists, this is for you. Congratulations again. Hi, my name is Andre Kimo Stone Guest, and I'm the president and CEO of the Fund for the Arts here in Louisville. We believe that the arts are a right, not a privilege, because arts are a fundamental expression of the human condition. Whether we realize it or not, each and every one of us consume and create art every day. 
And we recognize and realize that here at the Front for the Arts. And as a result of that, we have a campaign underway right now called I Am An Artist, where we want every person in this city to self-identify as an artist. But we're here today to celebrate some very special artists. And that's why we're a very proud sponsor of the Scholastic Art Awards. Arts, learning, and education go hand in hand. And here at the Fund, we award grants to over 200 schools and 20 community centers in our area to promote art and learning inside of the classroom and over the past couple of years at home because of COVID and NTI. But you young people who we're celebrating today, I'm glad to know that the arts are fully integrated to your life, as I can see with these wonderful pieces of art that you have uh, displayed. You should be proud for what you're doing, and you should showcase this to the world so that everybody can know that they could be like you, maybe not, maybe by not putting something on canvas, but in having an expression of who they are, an artistic expression to show who they are to the world. Congratulations to all of you. Keep doing what you're doing. And our city is a better place because of your art. Thank you. Before you could talk, you could draw. Before you could walk, you were a pint-sized symphony of sound. Before you could read, you were a poet. Before you really even understood rhythm, you created dance moves that had never been seen before. You invented shocking culinary combinations. You built a fortress out of trash. You improvised scenes and made up stories. And then life changed. But why? You were an amazing artist. You still are. And so am I. Hi, I'm Michelle Staggs from KMAC Museum, and we are honored to once again be presenting the Gold Key and American Vision nominees exhibition. Congratulations, your work and creativity is astounding.
Hi, I'm Joanna Miller from KMAC Museum. I'm the Director of Education here and was part of the group that chose the American Vision nominees this year. We looked for students that had a unique voice, but also showed great skill and technique in their art making. This year's nominees come from five different high schools. We have Manuel Gascon from Iroquois High School, Ava Simone Jackson from Ballard High School, Aisha Muhammad from Fairdale High School, Isabella Yoakum from Sacred Heart Academy, and Maya Yuzman from DuPont Manual High School. Congratulations, we so enjoyed seeing your work and being able to exhibit it here at KMAC. These superlative awards chosen by the Fund for the Arts celebrate the incredible talent and remarkable creativity of these student artists on display. The categories were derived from patterns and themes explored in this year's entries. We at the Fund are thrilled to honor such an exciting group of young artists. The category is most likely to appear in our dreams. We've chosen the two-headed calf by Ayla Kirchner from Ballard High School. The category is most creative exploration of the human body interior. And we have chosen heart altered book face by Mia Langford of Pleasure Ridge Park High School. Congratulations. The category is the most captivating stare. And the winner of this category is the caregiver by Chloe Baker from Sacred Heart Academy. Congratulations. The category is most likely to warrant a closer look, and the winner is The Ideal Afternoon by Gabriella Cullen from DuPont Manual High School. Congratulations, Gabriella. The category is most likely to appear in your nightmares. The winner is Forked Tongue by Madeline Conway from Mercy Academy. Congratulations. The category is the most creative exploration of the human body exterior, and the winner of this category is I Was Made This Way by Nathan Bedu Addo from DuPont Manual High School. Congratulations. The category is Best Use of Pattern Geometric, and the winner is Exclusive by Micah Lape from Louisville Male High School. Congratulations. The category is the Best Use of Pattern Organic, and the winner of this category is Nature's Breeze by David Smith from Christian Academy of Indiana. Congratulations. My name is Chris Wrights. I am the Chair and Director of the Height Institute for Art and Design at the University of Louisville. We are pleased and enthusiastic participants in this year's Scholastic Awards, both as um, award selectors and as the hosting venue for the Silver Key um, exhibition and the award ceremony, which will take place on Thursday the 16th in our campus galleries, the Schneider Hall Galleries on Belknap Campus. I wanna say that uh, this is the first year I've done this as, uh, as someone reviewing the awards, and I was just overwhelmed by the tremendous talents of the students in the um, Kentucky area. Uh, this was an inspiring group of artworks to review, and I'm really grateful for having had the opportunity. That said, we could only select three this year for the Heights uh, Scholastic Scholarship. Every year we award uh, students a $1,000 scholarship should they elect to uh, pursue their undergraduate education at the University of Louisville's Height Institute of Art and Design. Uh, they should know coming in that this $1,000 um, is just one of many scholarships that the department offers, not just to these students, um, but to any students that come through our program. And uh, the Height Institute of Art and Design is a robust undergraduate studio program with painting, drawing, printmaking, photography, ceramics, fiber arts, sculpture, glass, as well as interior design and graphic design. We also have undergraduate degrees in um, art history and classes available in critical and curatorial studies. Uh, and so we encourage all of the participants this year, because as I said, there were very many talented students, uh, to take a look at our website and see what the University of Louisville might be able to offer you. But without further ado, those winning students this year, among the many, many talented applications that we saw, were Simona Jackson, Gabriella Simons, and Ariana Avila. Congratulations to our winners. Uh, we hope to see you and everyone out for the exhibition of this year's Scholastic Silver Key winners. Thank you very much. And now for the 2023 LAFTA Emerging Fiber and Textile Artist Award. Founded in 1995, LAFTA 
is an organization of visual artists whose work encompasses a variety of surface design and construction techniques focusing on fibers, textiles, and beads. Their mission is to provide support to their members and to increase community awareness of fiber and textile art. You can find out more about LAFTA at their website, laftalouisville.org. I will be presenting on behalf of Amy Slobata, LAFTA President and Board Chair, as well as all of the members of LAFTA. This year's recipient of the LAFTA Emerging Fiber and Textile Artist Award will receive a gift certificate, as well as a sketchbook, a drawing pen, pen and pencil set. This year's 2023 LAFTA Emerging Fiber and Textile Artist Award goes to Elspeth Thornwell, Grade 12 DuPont Manual High School for the work, The Trip, art teacher, Elena Alford. Congratulations. Greetings, I'm Louisville Visual Art Executive Director, Christian Anderson. It's an honor every year to partner with the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards and to recognize emerging artists. This year we had a tremendous slate of applicants and it was really hard to choose, but we've got a top three. So the 2023 LVA Emerging Artist Awards. In third place is Lana Brown from Pleasure Ridge High School for her work, Feast of the Monarch in Mixed Media. Second place goes to Ariana Avila from DuPont Manual High School, whose painting Whipping Up a Storm was absolutely incredible. And in first place is Simone Jackson from Ballard High School for Girls' Night in an amazing painting. Thank you all for applying and congratulations to the winners. Thank you. The Middle School Artistic Excellence Award, which I will be presenting, is given to the student whose gold key middle school work represents a best in show. The Middle School Artistic Excellence Award winner will receive a certificate and art supplies, a sketchbook, and a drawing, pen, and pencil set. This year's 2023 Middle School Artistic Excellence Award winner is Bryn Powell, grade eight from No Middle School for the drawing, Childhood Never Dies, art teacher, Samantha Brooks. Congratulations, Bryn. And now for the presentation of the 2023 John Botto Scholarship Award. About John Botto and the Botto Award. John Botto was a Louisville artist of Italian heritage, born either in 1835 or 1842, depending on the source, who attended Louisville Male High School and made his way to Paris to study under Alexander Defoe. His style has been described as tonalism, influenced no doubt by his good friend Carl Brenner, considered the founding father of the Louisville Tonalist School. Mr. Botto participated in a variety of exhibitions and his works are currently in the collection of the Speed Art Museum, various art galleries and private collections. Mr. Botto left an endowment to the old Louisville public school system after his death in 1910. The interest from this fund was to be used to stage an art exhibition for public school students. This exhibit took place every spring in the Louisville Public Schools offices at 5th and Hill Street in the old Louisville Girls High School. When the city and county school systems merged in 1975, the exhibition was discontinued and the interest was used to award a scholarship to a Jefferson County Public School student whose overall body of work represents the highest quality from their years of Scholastic Art Awards program eligibility, grades 7 through 12. The 2023 John Botto Scholarship winner not only will be receiving a $250 scholarship, will also receive a certificate, a sketchbook, and a pen and pencil set. This year's John Botto Scholarship Award winner is Elspeth Thornwell from DuPont Manual High School. Elspeth had a number of awards this year, two Gold Key portfolios, two Gold Key Individual Awards, four Silver Key Individual Awards, and four Honorable Mention Individual Awards. 
Last year, Elspeth had one Gold Key Individual Award, two Silver Key Individual Awards, and an Honorable Mention Award. Back when she attended No Middle School in 2019, Elspeth received a Silver Key Individual Award and an Honorable Mention Individual Award. That's a total of 18 awards. Congratulations to Elspeth Thornwell for being the 2023 John Botto $250 Scholarship Award winner. Thank you so much for watching and celebrating our 2023 Scholastic Art Award winners from the Louisville Metropolitan Area Art Region. Students, we applaud you and we wish you nothing but great success. Many of you who are not seniors, I look forward to seeing work submitted by you for next year's 2024 Scholastic Art Awards. To all students passionate about visual arts, stay true to what means the most to you and continue to make art every day. I expect to see your work on a variety of virtual platforms, in galleries, and maybe museums. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and showing your support for visual arts education. In the words of founder Robbie Robinson, the Scholastic Art Awards ensures to a wide group of future citizens, regardless of vocation, a sense of the power of independent thought and an appreciation of the beauty and wonder of existence. A reminder. Don't forget to check out our regional online exhibitions. The link is on our regional webpage via the national website at artandwriting.org. You can also follow me on Twitter at JCPS Arts. Please continue to support K-12 and post-secondary visual arts programs and art education. Advocate for art. Thank you so much and a final congratulations to our award winners this year.